When we think about the symbolic messages that the unconscious sends us, I do think that skin is one of the places where the psyche can really talk to us, whether it's blushing, a mysterious rash, an itching of unknown origin, a swelling. And we go to the doctor and the doctor runs a full panel of tests and says, I have no idea. Sometimes it might be useful to ask, what is psyche trying to tell me? Let's turn a little bit to a more purely symbolic piece, and particularly things that happen to the skin that we can't control, Yeah, which are also um, transitional diseases of the skin, or things that happen to the skin. And one of the ways I think analysts can think about this is, well, what if I had a dream and I saw a figure who had this manifestation mm. on their skin. How might I symbolize that? So for instance, I'm thinking that I were to meet somebody in a dream and that I noticed they were bleeding from their skin. You know, I might think that, you know, where am I psychologically wounded right now? Mm-hmm. That something external has come against the psyche and and I am bleeding and perhaps I'm not aware of it. So the dream maker then sends an image of the bleeding one so that I can then ask that question. Where is my unacknowledged bleeding? Because it doesn't seem to be treated or it doesn't seem to be stopping on its own. Hmm. You know, when we think about the symbolic messages that the unconscious sends us and might it send us such messages through our skin. Mm -hmm. I do think that skin is one of the places where the psyche can really talk to us, whether Mm -hmm. it's, as we've been talking about, maybe blushing, but even, you know, that maybe there's a mysterious, um, a mysterious rash, you know, an, Mm -hmm. an unknown an itching of unknown origin, a swelling, or a discoloration, or a roughness. And we go to the doctor, and the doctor runs a full panel of tests and says, I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think we have to be careful in always assuming that, that every single physical ailment has a kind of, you know, kind of psychological core to it. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I believe that it does. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes, you know, you just, It just is something physiological and full stop. However, I think that skin is one of the places where mysterious things happen. I I don't know if the dermatologists listening would agree with me. And, And that sometimes it might be useful to ask, what is Psyche trying to tell me through these hives or through this mysterious blistering or, uh, you know, whatever other um, strange uh, phenomenon might be happening on our skin. I was looking at some of the writings by a, a physician and psychoanalyst named Jorge Olnick, mm. and he conducted this really interesting work where he had teamed up with dermatologists. Huh. Um, and for a time, a patient would meet the dermatologist and this, the psychoanalyst together at the same consult And depending on what the patient started with, so if the patient started with talking about psychological distress, the first consult would be with the analyst. If they started talking about this as a purely physical phenomena, then they would meet with the dermatologist first. And that the psyche would kind of declare Mm -hmm. where the tension might be. And as you said, sometimes... It's something that can be managed physically, although I would venture to say that nothing that happens in the body is purely physical, because the psyche Mm -hmm. is always internalizing a representation of everything Mm -hmm. that's happening. What we might be asking is, where's the causal agent? And and perhaps the causal Mm -hmm. agent could be Mm -hmm. external, but the psyche is still turning it into a psychic event. Sure. Yes. Regardless. So I like this idea of taking a psychological attitude, even if we're not sure that it has 
emerge from psychological conflict. Mm -hmm. That said, the uh, analysts have really created a certain library of thoughts Mm. about certain disorders of the skin and how one might orient to that. And so I thought we would uh, toss some of those things out and see if there's anything interesting in any of that. So let's talk about psoriasis, <laughs> which is, you know, really substantive problem for people. So one psychoanalytic attitude is that the responsibility and burden that somebody is carrying can be symbolized by these plaques of skin. Mm. And that as the skin is kind of peeling off, that can symbolize a sense of divided loyalties. Mm. Mm. And where that shows up on the body and suggest where this might be relevant in the psyche, particularly connected to the history of what has happened on the, in those body areas. Mm-hmm. So with psoriasis and eczema, often the dermis, the skin, is growing too quickly. Mm-hmm. And so it's throwing off the superficial layers of the skin, which is revealing unformed skin mm-hmm. cells mm-hmm. consequently are not prepared to be exposed to air and touch and other things. Mm. So they look kind of red and raw. But they're not raw because anything has been done to them. They're raw because they came out into the world prematurely. Mm. So that's an interesting psychological process. And we might ask, as well as, of course, treating the symptom compassionately, Mm -hmm. where? Where do you feel forced to come forward prematurely? Mm-hmm. And was mm-hmm. that part of the, mm. the childhood? We could imagine that if you were raised by parents that had a lot of idealized fantasies on a child, they might force the child to be precocious, to have to do things before they're ready. Mm-hmm. because the parent needs the child to carry some sense of superiority or talent that the child may not be ready to evidence or to bring forward that's internalized as a pattern. There's an idea that the skin could reveal that as a tendency Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the psyche. So another area that the psychoanalysts were really interested in was scratching. And they often were curious about whether it is fueled by anxiety or stress, Mm -hmm. and that the physical act of scratching is a manifestation of attempting to relieve an internal or psychological Mm -hmm. conflict. The other thing which is interesting about scratching is that the scratching increases the desire often to scratch more. Mm Yeah. Which, which, from a psychological standpoint, one would think, oh, the body wants something, yeah. and then I meet the need, and there should be a sense of satisfaction. Like, I'm thirsty, I drink water, I'm not thirsty. Scratching is very complicated because you're meeting a need, <laughs> but it leads to a more arousal. Uh. So for the Freudians, sometimes scratching was thought of as an erotic experience, <laughs> and it can feel erotic. Oh, my goodness. If you're itchy and somebody yeah, yeah, scratches yeah. it and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's so great. I mean, don't tell me that's not erotic. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. It's incredibly yeah. sensuous mm-hmm. to scratch mm-hmm. that itch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in, it can be very anxiety relieving for people that have skin picking disorders, mm-hmm. um, hair pulling disorders. Uh, there's something about uh, that kind of repeated uh, behavior where 
The problem is that it's a palliative. Mm -hmm. It's satisfying for the moment. Mm -hmm. But it, as you said, it doesn't satisfy. It's, it, it leads to the urge to more, which would you know, make us curious about what's re what else is going on uh, under the skin. Mm -hmm. What's, ge what's mm -hmm. getting under your skin? Right. And so we might then be curious, mm -hmm. are there anxieties that I am not attending to for yeah. one reason or another? Another thing that analysts were curious about were skin lesions that would just emerge. And mm -hmm. they often thought that the lesion was an unconscious cry for help or attention so that the physical symptom was seeking to make suffering visible mm -hmm. and indisputable to the others around them. Mm -hmm. And they felt that that was often due to feelings of being misunderstood or neglected. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I mean, I, I'm even thinking in, in those terms, Joseph, you, you have me thinking of the stigmata, yeah. which oh. is another sort of like making visible of something. It's a different something. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, making visible, uh, you know, that we've been sort of wounded by God, as it were, mm. and it shows up on the skin. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. very, that's interesting. And I have no doubt that there are times when that's what happens, when, when the skin reveals, uh, reveals a wound mm -hmm. that has only been suffered internally. Yeah. I think, you know, where I'm going with this is to be uh, curious about these things that our, our skin makes obvious uh, to ourselves and sometimes to others. There's a problem here. It's, it, it's not mm -hmm. as if it's, you know, some uh, internal pain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right there on the surface. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Do something about it. Help me with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a relationship, as we've already discussed, between what's inside and what's outside. There's a relationship between stress and all kinds of uh, physiological problems that lower our immune response mm -hmm. or, or jack it up beyond what's needed. Uh, so I think really these are ways where we can be curious about what, what is going on besides, oh, gee whiz, I have a skin problem, right. um, mm -hmm. I need to see a dermatologist, which I totally support. Of course, of course. And is that the end of it? Because very, yeah, yeah. Few, very few things are only one thing. <laughs>